Um, as he was introduced before, this is Denny. Um, we use um, patients like Denny a lot uh, in the pharmacy school, in the medical school, and some other schools in the health sciences. Um, as we get him set up, he can um, talk, he can, you'll see him breathe, he can uh, bleed, all kinds of uh, neat stuff. But today we're going to use him to show you what an opioid overdose looks like and then what happens whenever you use Narcan. So obviously you're not going to have all these vitals up here whenever you see somebody <laughs> overdosing. Um, but we're going to use it to show you kind of what the opioid does and um, how it's, uh, what's going on in the body. So whenever you take an opioid, it binds to opioid receptors in the brain. And that what, is what helps it you know, relieve your pain um, but in the case of an opioid overdose, the big effect that you'll see is the patient's not breathing as much. So if you watch um, Denny, you will see him take, he just took a breath, you'll see him take a breath every once in a while. But down here is his um, respiratory rate. Is he an overdose? Okay. So he's uh, just overdosed, it's happening. So right now his respiratory rate's dropping to 10, it'll go as low as 5 or 4. Does anybody know what your re normal respiratory rate is? I heard 16, yeah. Um, so 16, 18, something like that, um, depending on how nervous you are, I guess. Um, but he's down to six, so he's not breathing very much. And that really affects all the other vital um, signs that you're going to see. So when you're not breathing a whole lot, you're not getting oxygen, it's not going around to the other parts of the body. So up here is his heart rate to 34, usually 60 to 80 is uh, normal. This is the percent of oxygen um, that's in his body, usually 100% is what we're looking for. He's down to 72 and that will continue to drop. And then this number right here is his blood pressure. So it's down to 52 over 32, or 51 over 31 now. So you'll see that really the main problem here is that he's not breathing and that's what we're going to give Narcan to fix. Um, so we have a couple different products. Okay, so now that you know what it looks like, what do you do if you see somebody like that? The first thing that we want you to do is to call 911. That's because it can take some time for that ambulance to arrive, um, so you want to get that ball rolling as soon as you can. Um, second point is to check for responsiveness. So rub their chest a little bit, shout their name if you know it, give it a shake and see if they're um, going to wake up. You can also check for their pulse, um, see if they're breathing, whatever you're comfortable with. If you know CPR, you can do that. How many of you have been trained in CPR? Okay, great. Great, so you can do CPR. Um, focus on the compressions part. If you're gonna do any type of rescue breathing, we recommend that you uh, use a barrier device because you don't know what kind of drugs might have been present. But chest compressions are a great thing to do in the meantime if you feel comfortable. And then the last thing is to give um, naloxone our Narcan, which we have a couple different products, and I think it's great that you guys have the opportunity to lead with some naloxone. Because as Dr. Lynch mentioned, the more that's out there in the community, the more lives that we can save. Um, so again, a little bit, I'm a pharmacist, so um, the pharmacology of naloxone is here. Basically, it uh, blocks and reverses the effects of uh, or Narcan, blocks and it reverses the effects of opioids in the brain. So you'll see these right here are opioid receptors here in the brain. Um, here are opioids, so pretend this is what an opioid molecule looks like. Whenever you take it, it comes in and binds to those receptors, and that's what causes all of the things that opioids can do. Narcan, however, which is these green uh, bubbles here, it has a higher affinity to those receptors. So it's going to come in and it's going to bump the opioid off of the receptor, kind of block that opioid from being there and causing its effects. Um, the key thing about it too is that it only works on opioid receptors. So if you have other drugs on board, it's not going to have any effect on that. So we've been talking a little bit about patients that overdose on more than one thing. Um, this will only work on the opioid piece. And again, our goal is to help get them breathing again um, so that we can get them the care that they need. It works really fast. Um, within a couple of minutes, one, two minutes, you should start to see some effect. Uh, but it doesn't last for very long. So um, the kits will come uh, with two doses of Narcan. So if you see it start to work and then maybe it fades off, the patient um, kind of gets somnolent, somnolent again, um, you can give that second dose. 
Um, the side effects for the, um, using naloxone are really rare, maybe some um, chest buildup of fluid in the chest, but hopefully by then you have them into the emergency room getting taken care of. So really adverse effects, don't have to worry about them. Um, just make sure that you're calling 911 and getting a healthcare professional on board. Um, it's available in, in uh, intranasal formulations, um, which is really what we're going to focus on today. It's also available IM, and then in the hospital we use the IV formulation. So um, we're going to focus on intranasal, which is, I believe, what you guys have to take home, just because it's the easiest to teach and the easiest to use. So we've talked about this, and I really enjoyed going around and listening to everybody talk about why um, they think it's important to be here. I think a lot of you pointed out that really anybody in any of these scenarios, which pretty much covers everyone, should have uh, naloxone. We're big believers, believers of that, and that's why we're here. So um, anybody who survived an opioid overdose, whether it's intentional or unintentional, they're taking opioids for a uh, prescription reason, um, it's helpful to have those in the home. If you're recovering from an opioid use disorder, if, again, if you use them um, medically or non-medically, um, if you're prescribed opioids and other sedative medications, using combination can really be um, a very harmful situation, including um, benzodiazepines, so things like Klonopin and Xanax. Um, again, taking high dose of opioids, if you're a family member or friend of someone that uses opioids, some people that go into the homes of people that are using opioids, it's really nice to have that there um, in the opportunity that you do see something because naloxone truly does save lives. And if you're willing to help a stranger um, like Denny that you find. <laughs> so have any of you heard of the standing order for naloxone? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Okay, so this is a little background about it. So PA Act 139 was put into place by Governor Corbett in September 2014. So what Act 139 did was it allowed family or friends of individuals at risk of an opioid overdose to obtain um, a prescription naloxone and administer it to somebody with an opioid overdose. Um, there's also a Good Samaritan provision, which means that if you're present at the site and you're giving naloxone in good faith, the people around won't be um, prosecuted for that. So, really um, takes that you know fear away from treating the patient that needs it <clears throat> and then in um, October of 2015 um, Pennsylvania developed a standing order which essentially means you can go to any pharmacy that stocks naloxone ask for it and you can get it there's like a, a standing prescription there and the pharmacist will fill in your information and give it to you um, you can run it through insurance which is a common misconception um, Medicaid and Medicare, their copay is usually zero dollars, so it really encourages people to, to go get it and take it home. You will see physicians like Dr. Lynch give a prescription for naloxone, and that kind of is the thought that <coughs> if I take home a piece of paper that says, my doctor said I should get this filled, there might be a little bit more motivation to go and get it. But anybody can go and get uh, naloxone at a pharmacy that stocks it. So overdose-free PA was mentioned before. Um, so you can go to it and they'll give you a list of pharmacies that, um, where you can find naloxone. Um, again, most insurances cover it and um, you can also pay cash for it. So um, some people think that they'll get flagged by their insurance for getting it and that's a misconception. Um, we, really, we want anybody to go and get it. Now we'll go into giving the naloxone, I think. Yep. So, switch it back over there. So, um, I believe this is the one that you guys are going home with today. Does this look familiar? Or is it this one? Oh, the one. Perfect. Okay, good. So there are two um, products I'm going to show you. Um, these are the two most common. The one that you're taking home today is the easier one to use, so good news there. Um, but this is the first one um, that we'll look at. This is naloxone 2 milligrams and 2 mi milliliters. So if you look at it, um, it's a vial that contains you know, about this much fluid. This comes in three different parts. So um, when you guys, towards the end of the presentation, I'll be here if you want to come up and look at it. Um, I like practicing this. I do this a lot and I like to show people how to practice. 
Um, if I were doing this in real life, I think I would still be nervous just because of all of the steps. So it's really important, I think, to come up and learn how to do it. Um, this one with uh, three different parts, there are some caps that you need to remove. So there's a purple cap to the vial. And then there's two yellow caps. So you'll remove those as well. And then you kind of put them together. And it kind of serves as a little plunger. Now you add this third piece, which is called an atomizer. It essentially makes it so that when it comes out, it sprays instead of just being a liquid. So that's what that third piece does. Because it's such a large volume, you actually put half in one nostril and half in the other. So, um, and that's basically so that it doesn't drip back out again. Um, there are demarcations on the vial, but just be approximate. You don't really have time to, to be exact. So you can use it that way. Um, so two milligrams and two mLs. And I think that's what this one, I think a lot of police still have because they got that originally when that was the most common product. And that's what they were trained on. So I know our first responders in the city of Pittsburgh yep. still carry that screw together product because that was what they all got trained on before the next thing we show you, which is much easier to use. Um, this next, next product um, that you guys get to take home, I think is what's present. I think in schools have, might have this product and there are a lot of grants coming out to get these kind of products into the um, hands of you guys. Um, this is actually four milligrams in 0.4 mLs, so a stronger dose and a much smaller um, uh, liquid. So really it comes like this, um, which we have a lot of trainers up here with the springs that you, you can try it out. Um, so we really recommend not touching the plunger until you're ready to give it because it's such a small dose. Um, but basically you hold it like this, one finger on either side, and give it a good push. Um, I've given, um, used the real thing, and you will feel a pop whenever it goes in. Um, but these have springs on them to train them. So, so we have done either. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so in this one there is a second dose as well. It's four milligrams, so each one of those is twice as much as the entire vial right. as yeah. far as amount of drug and, and a fraction amount of volume. Yeah. So um, if you can, you can tilt this head back a little bit, but again, using your fingers here is a good marker, so you'll push the, um, the uh, nasal part of it in as far as you can go, and then give it the push. So unlike the other one, you don't have to put half in one nostril, half in the other. You just give it a good push. Four milligrams is a pretty strong dose, so this should be um, good enough. But if you need to use that second dose before um, EMS arrives, then um, you're welcome to, again, because the adverse effects are, are really rare. Some people ask if you need to wait for a breath before you administer it. Um, as if you were taking afrin or something like that. You don't, which is a good thing because he's only breathing four times a minute, so it would take a while to catch him on a breath. But now that we gave it, um, you'll see his vitals are looking better. Um, you essentially just put him into opioid withdrawal because you knocked all of those opioids off of the receptor and naloxone's there binding it. So um, he might show some symptoms of withdrawal, which might be some high blood pressure, heart rate might be a little bit high. Really the key thing is we got him breathing again. So he's breathing a little faster than normal, but he's breathing. And you'll see this number get closer to 100. So again, the goal is to get him breathing again. If you watch, when you guys come up, you can feel him breathe. Um, and you just saved a life by using this, um, this little nasal spray. Um, is he, is he awake at this point? Yep, he's, he's talking. Like, does that, does that like wake him up? Like, mm -hmm. It should, but okay. this only works on um, opioids. So if he also took Xanax, for example, he still will be sedated. But we, we want to wake him up from the opioid, um, or we want to get him breathing again from the opioid. Is he going to start like vomiting? He might vomit, good question. Yep, so he might vomit if, if you want to, you can tilt his head to the side so if he vomits, he has less risk of aspiration. Um, he is just, the, people describe um, opioid withdrawal as the flu times 100, it just feels awful. So he's probably going to feel pretty crappy, um, but really we just saved his life. Thank you.